Alright, welcome guys. Today, we're going to be tackling the problem of January 2021, the first Yusuko contest of 2021, in fact. So, today we're going to be tackling the first problem of the January contest in the Bronze Division. It's called Uttered But Not Heard. Now, without further ado, let's jump into it. <laughs> Alright, so let's just start reading here. So, little known fact about cows is that they have their own little version of the alphabet, the calphabet, and it consists of the 26 letters A through Z, but when a cow speaks the calphabet, she lists these letters in a specific ordering that might be different from the order A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z that are used um, to hearing, that we are used to hearing. So, to pass the time, especially the cow has been humming the calphabet over and over again, and Farmer John is curious how many times she's hummed it. So, given a lowercase string of letters that Farmer John has heard Bessie say, compute the minimum number of times Bessie must have hummed the entire alphabet in order to afford Farmer John to have heard the given string. Farmer John isn't always paying attention to what Bessie hums, so he might have missed some letters that Bessie has hummed. A string you are told consists of just the letters that he remembers hearing. So, this might seem just really confusing, but um, one of the most important skills of being good at Yusuko, I guess, is just like deciphering what they're trying to say without um minting words so and they might some they, this might sound kind of confusing where it's like oh which ones did he remember which ones do i have to decipher but honestly um if we just scroll down to the sample input you can see that they just give you um the, the alphabet and then just the four letters that he heard so that's all you need to know all right so let's just see what the info format is so the first line contains 26 lowercase letters a through z in the order that they appear in the alphabet so let's look down here so we have this alphabet type thing, but this is not always going to be like this. It can be basically, it can be for example, the Z is at the front and it's like in reverse order or whatever order you can think of. Um, in this case, it's just a regular alphabet, but it doesn't always have to be. So we just have to consider that. So the next line contains a string of lowercase letters that Farmer John heard Bessie say. This string has length at least one and at most one thousand. All right. So, print the minimum number of times Bessie must have hummed the entire alphabet. Alright, so we have um, an entire letter alphabet. And then we have mood, or M-O-O-D. So, when Bessie is just humming her song, she says M-O-O-D, and that's what Farmer John heard. So, um, Farmer John needs to, I mean, no, we need to find how many, the minimum amount of times that Bessie hummed so that uh, Farmer John could possibly hear this. So, in this case, the example output is 3. Well, why? In this example, the alphabet is ordered in the same normal alphabet. Yep. But it's not always going to be like that, so we can't hard code the alphabet into the code. Just remember that. And Bessie must have hummed the alphabet at least three times. It is, impossible, it is possible for Bessie to have hummed the alphabet three times and for Farmer John to hear the letters in uppercase as denoted below. All right, let's take a look at the capital letters here. Or, or in, yeah, an uppercase. So in this case, we have M, and then we have O. Okay, and then let's see here. There's nothing else. So then we have O again. Finally, we have D. Well, why is that? So basically, how this, how I understood this problem is that basically, um, we, as long as you have letters that are in consecutive order, you can fit them into one song. For example, let's just say that Bessie, in, instead of mood, it was just A B C D. That's what Farmer John heard. In this case, a sentence in order, that means that Bessie only needs to hum this one. So the answer would be one if this was A, B, C, D. But now, what if it was, say, Z, A, B? Z, A, B. Well, in this case, if we go down, well, since Z is first, that means we go scroll through it and we find Z here. Well, Bessie can't really sing, a, sing the same song of, um, can't really include A, B, since it's, it's, um, she already sang it and Farmer John didn't hear it. So that means we have to use another song. So basically, the, the um, basically that's just how it works. So, for example, if they gave us, um, they gave us mood. And then we have A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. Well, if we have M, and let's just say, and I think that, um, I believe that M is indeed the 12th letter of the alphabet. So in this case, M is going to be at index 12. And then we can say O. Well, O is just two letters away from M, so it's going to be 14. So O has index of 14. And that'll be fine because 12 to 14, that's in um, 
that's in ascending order. So there's nothing wrong there. So that means Bessie can sing one song of the ABC of the alphabet and um, include both of these letters. But then we get another O. And what did they say? Well, um, from John is in, in the. Oh, uh, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, so so let's just in specific order. So I'm. So the problem basically says that if if she hums the same letter, it cannot be in the same string since um it's since Farmer John can't possibly heard it twice because um Bessie just seems in consecutive order of the alphabet. So that means if we have a second O still at index fourteen, that means we have to she has, she would have to sing it twice before Farmer John heard it. So that means we add another um time here. So Bessie can cover M and O within one song. Of the uh, one song of the alphabet, but then she has to sing it another time in order for Farmer John to have heard this O right here. And finally, we have D. Well, there's, it's not possible for Bessie to have included D, or else Farmer John wouldn't have heard it in any of the songs. So we need another song for Farmer John to hear D. And D's in this going ABC. Yeah, it's going to be next four. So that that's why we have one, two, three, three songs. Because why? Well, Bessie can cover um, M and O with this one song since they're in ascending order. But then we have, um, but then we have um, fourteen again, and we can't. Bessie is not can't really say um, two letters, two of the same letter in one, um, in seeing one time of the alphabet of the alphabet. So that means we she has to sing it again for her around here. And the same goes for D. Um, if she sang it, if she, she probably already sang D already. But Farmer John didn't hear it. He heard it after she sang O. So that's not possible for um, him to have heard D before she said O. So basically, she has to sing another time for Farmer John to hear it. So just saying it again. Um, a one song to cover M and O. We need another song to cover O. And finally, we need another song to cover D. And I hope that makes sense. So, um, well, that's just pretty much it. Basically, we can just use index to determine if they're in ascending order. And we can have like a count variable that's going to start at one, and then if we if we see that we have an index of the same or larger, or I mean, or it's the same or smaller than what we have already now, because basically if it's not if it's not in ascending order, that means we need to go to the next song and use that one. Um, we just add one and keep adding until we find that we're done with the loop or we're done parsing through the data. So now that we have that in mind, we can start coding. All right, guys. So here I'm with my um, ID here, um, IntelliJ. So um, basically, uh, I've just, since they switched um, to standard input and standard output now, um, I'm going to be using scanner today. And then after scanning, I'm um, using uh, declaring a scanner. Um, I just declared um, two strings because why? Um, well, if we go back to the problem here, basically all they give you is two strings. So I just read them out as two strings. Um, you don't really need to store them as arrays or anything. I don't really think that's that useful. And so yeah, so let's declare some other variables here. So let's declare one for um, let's declare one for the counter basically. So they ask for the minimum amount of alphabet. Well, not, no, minimum amount of times Bessie needs to sing the alphabet. So let's just call that return or ret for short, and let's call that one because she always needs to sing that at least one time. And let's see here. Um, let's declare one for like. Uh, let's declare one for um. Declare a temporary variable to use later on, and let's declare an index variable that's going to basically allow us to uh, check the index and basically compare. So for int i equals zero, i equals uh, her dot length. So her is simply the um, what the word is, or just in this case it was mood, but it doesn't have to be a word. It can just a sequence of letters that Farmer John heard. Minus one. I plus plus. All right. So what are we doing here? We're basically just looping through. So in this case, herd is going to be equal to uh, mood. So that means we're going to loop through it four times. All right. So then, well, if I equals zero, oops. If I equals zero, that means it's the first iteration. So we actually need to set um, our variables to what I is. So her dot substring. Okay, so heard. I I plus one. So 
again this is the first iteration so we just have to set um, uh, the set our variables to basically that substring there and its index so we can compare that index uh, to something later on so when I say check this isn't just in fact just a character basically for example for mood in this case it's going to be M first so index is going to be uh, oops cow dot index of so cow if, you, if I didn't state it clearly already it's just the cow alphabet that they give us uh, index of uh, check so what does index do well index just finds the index or number or number minus one um, or it's basically its position within our alphabet here and that's going to allow us to determine whether we need new ones or not so else that means it's not the first one so that means we can uh, reset our check to equals her dot substring uh, i i plus one and then we have in compare so in compare um, basically it's going to allow us to compare um, our old index to the new index of our next character in this case after m this is going to be o in mood so index of check oops and now we compare them so let's go back to our sync saw process here so basically if we have our alphabet here and we have mood basically the only time we need to add uh, we need a uh, best you to sing one more time is if our next letter is our next letter's index within um, this alphabet here is less than or equal to our original one so in this case for M M is going to be over here at index 12 and O oh well O is greater than 12 so we can st um, we can stick with the one we've got since we don't really need a new one since it's still in chronological order so um, we can um, we don't need a new one for that and we continue but then we get another O and that's equal to our old index so that means we need another one and finally for D that's definitely earlier than O so it's a smaller index so that means we also need another one and let's so following that logic if compare is less than or equal to index that means we add a ret And then index equal, and then we reset our index to our next uh, cow's character. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I know that this solution seems really simple, but um, trust me, it takes some time to work out on your own to basically just decipher the text and what they want you to do. But overall, it's a pretty easy problem, and it, it's just like that. It's how you um, finish the first problem of your Uscope contest. So we can just try running it here. Run here. And we just print out rats since it's only for us. Alright, let's just put our input in. Oh, uh, let's see here. There we go. We get three. And then is that what the problem wants us to do? I believe so. There we go. In this case we have three. Alright, very nice. Now we can try submitting it. Projects and uh, phone stuff. Cow eighty six. Let's go. All right, so uh, we're putting it into our online grading server on the Usco website. Grading in progress. Very nice. All right, we got two test cases. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. All right, there we go. Ten test cases done and easy. All right, guys. Um, thank you guys for watching this episode of uh, a use co walkthrough. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you enjoyed, comment down below. Um, hit that little bell. Add the like. Uh, um, hit that like button and subscribe. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.